Disclaimer. The information provided in this video is for general information and educational purposes only. Students should test cybersecurity techniques in the secured lab setup. I do not take any responsibility, and I am not liable for any damage or problem caused while implementing the tools and technique. Hi. Welcome back to another episode of How to Hack. First of all, I would like to say sorry to all my subscribers, I've been busy for the past couple of months that's why I have not uploaded anything. But don't worry, I'm here and today, I will launch the sequel injection documentary. This is the first of 11 episodes that I prepared for you. So, what the hell are we waiting for, let's go. In this series, we're going to be talking about a popular type of vulnerability, called SQL injections. Before we start talking about how this occurs and how to exploit it, let's first learn what SQL is. Now, if you're giving a pen test on a certain website, chances are this website is a little bit bigger than smaller websites, so it's probably using a database. Most websites, other than very simple websites, use databases, the databases are used to store data, so they store usernames, passwords, news articles, blog posts, pictures, etc. Anything that happens on the website is stored on a database and the web application queries the database and then displays the data to you or to the users on screen. When the users do something, it will either update, delete, or modify the data that exists in the database. This interaction between the web application and the database happens using a language called SQL. So, let me show you what I mean by database. This is just an example. I'm not hacking anything. I'm just going to log into the database that is installed on our Metasploitable machine, and then we're just going to see what's been installed on it. So, I'm not doing any hacking. There's nothing here. There's nothing fancy. Just logging into my SQL. And then I'm putting the username as root and the Metasploitable doesn't use a password for the root, which is really bad, but obviously, it's a vulnerable system. So, I'm just gonna log in and I'm not hacking anything, I'm not doing any SQL injections, this is just the terminal for my SQL, which the web application would use to interact with the database. So, I'm just trying to show you what I mean by databases and what's saved in there. So, the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm just going to type in show databases. And that'll show us the databases that exist on our target server and you can see that we have the information schema. This is a default database that holds default information and information about all the other databases. So this one gets installed by default when you install MySQL. The rest have been installed for each web application. So, we can see, we have one for TikiWiki, we have one for OWASP 10. And that's for this one utility. We also have one called MySQL, we have one called Metasploit, and one for DVWA, the web application. So, you can see, for each web application we actually have a database and this database holds the information that is used by that web application. Let me show you what's in there, so I'm going to use the OWASP 10 database. So this is the one from utility, for this web application. And we can see the table, so each database has tables and in the tables there is information. So, I'm gonna say, show tables, to see the tables that we have. As you can see, we have a table for accounts, so you can assume that this table has information about the usernames, passwords, and information about the users. We have a table for blogs, so probably has the blog inputs, the posts, and the comments in there. You can see captured data, and credit cards, so there's a table that contains credit cards. Now, this is huge for shopping websites, they actually would have a credit cards table and the information for the credit cards would be stored there. Basically, the database will store everything, all the data that is used on the website because they don't get stored on files, it's not efficient. So, let's have a look at the accounts and if I just say, 
Select, so this is exactly how the web application would be retrieving information from the database, it will select stuff, update, or delete. So, I'm doing a select statement here, again, this is not hacking, I'm not doing anything, just selecting stuff. And I'm gonna select star, which means everything, from accounts. And as we can see, we have the account ID, the username, the password, and then the signature for the person, and if that person is an admin. Now these columns depend on the table, so it's actually the person who designs the database, designs the tables, the columns, as well, and then the data gets inserted by the web application. So, you can see that we have a user called admin and their password is admin pass. We can see we have a user called Adrian and their password is some password. So, this is just to show you what databases look like, and just to get a feel on it, because, in the future episodes, we're gonna try to exploit these databases and have access similar to this. So this, I just logged in with a username and a password now, usually, you wouldn't have access like this, only the web admin would have that access. In the next videos, we're gonna try to run some attacks to gain access similar to this, so that we'll have full control over the database so that we can read stuff and see if we can write or modify things. I hope you learned something once again in today's tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and enable notifications to keep you updated on the latest ethical hacking topics. Thanks again for watching. Let us move on to the next episode of the SQL Injection Documentary Series. Peace.